make it with God on your side. Who can stop you? There's no need to hide. If God is for us, who can stand against us? I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run on. It's time to celebrate, we're on the winning side. It's time to stand up, no one left behind. The devil's a liar, lift Jesus higher. I'm gonna shout, I'm gonna shout, I'm gonna shout. No te pares, no te escondas más Dios con nosotros, ¿quién contra nosotros? Yo correré, yo correré, yo correré Vamos a celebrar, tú vas a ganar Párate firme, no te quedes atrás Diablo es mentiroso, Cristo es exaltado Yo cantaré Praise the Lord to everyone that is online today. We want to thank you for joining us today on CTK, Apostolic Faith Healing Temple. And we thank you right now as we come before you, Lord Jesus, that this week we won't have any service, but we do want to say that we have a seven-day devotional that we want you to join us on. We still, as we learned last week, that we have to be about the Father's business. We have to maintain business as usual. So as we go before this week, we'll be seeing emails and messages coming from um, our, our social um, application. And, uh, and we want you to take the time to read the scriptures. Get them into your heart. Put them into practice. Talk to your families and your children about them this week. And as we go before the Lord this week in Thanksgiving, let us give thanks to the Lord for everything he has done for us. Last week's service, we talked about it's hard for us to give thanks for everything in our lives, but we have to give thanks for the difficult things, the difficult situations and circumstances that we have in our lives. So we have to give God the glory and the thanks for the good and the bad. Amen. As we go before the Lord also, we are not in the sanctuary, but we do have the ability to give and give uh, fruitfully online. You can go to our website, CTK O'Fallon, and provide your, um, your tithes and offerings there. And uh, as we go before the Lord, I do want to open up with a, a scripture that has been on my mind this week, and, uh, and it's really trying times. So as we go before the Lord in Joshua, one and nine. Thank you, Jesus. And it reads, have not I commanded thee? This is the Lord speaking. Be strong and of good courage. We have to be strong right now, family. Visitors, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Because it's easy for us to be afraid of the things that are going on right now. But it, the Lord says, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. The Lord is with you right now, saints, wherever you're watching this service right now, in your cars, in your houses. And I thank and praise the Lord with your families, in the airplanes. For those that are out there today, right now watching this service, don't be afraid of what's going on and know that the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. Amen. So let us raise our hands right now in prayer. Lord, we thank you right now, Jesus. Lord, for this day that you blessed us with today, Lord. We thank you for keeping us and holding us today, Lord Jesus, Lord, and for giving us a right mind and a right spirit to come into your household in praise today, Lord. Lord, we want to give you the honor today, Lord Jesus, and we want to glorify you wherever we go, Lord Jesus, no matter the circumstances, no matter the tests and the trials that you put us through, Lord. We know that you're with us today, Lord Jesus, Lord. Lord, we want to lift you 
up today in our praise today, in our worship today, Lord, in the houses, wherever we are today, Lord. Lord, we want to give you the honor, Lord. We want to give you the glory, Jesus, Lord. Lord, let us, Lord Jesus, raise you up in your praises, Lord, in your holy name. Lord, we just want to tell you thank you. Lord, we want to give you the honor. Lord, we want to give you the glory. These blessings we ask in your precious name, Jesus. And let the church say amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah Jesus. You. Let's bless the Lord this morning. He's great and greatly to be praised. Amen. Oh, we love you, Jesus. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will praise his name. I will praise his name. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will
presence of the Lord that I feel here today. Amen. Amen. What an awesome God. He has overcome the world, and because he overcame, we can also be overcomers as well. I thank God for that hope. Amen. That we're not just, amen, trying to make it just barely. No, the Bible says you're an overcomer. Amen. You have overcome. Amen. Because he's overcome. Thank you for joining us this morning online. We're so uh, sorry that we can't meet in person, but such is the time. And thank you for taking time out. It would be easy just to come up with something else to do, but to take time out to say, no, we're going to put God first and we're going to take this season, this, this hour for the Lord. So I hope that this is a blessing to you today. I want to say, uh, reiterate what Brother Zarita said at the beginning, and that is that we're going to do seven days of Thanksgiving. And so just like our prayer revival, you will be getting an email. You should have already gotten one for today. All through this Thanksgiving week, celebrating, amen, Thanksgiving before the Lord. And we have a right to be thankful. Uh, uh, we, we have a responsibility to be thankful. God has done so much for us. And so as you go about this week, I pray that you hopefully can get to be with some family. And I know uh, with everything that's going on, those are difficult. They're not the same. But uh, we pray that God's blessings would be upon you this week in the midst of this. And so let's not be discouraged. And let's be a voice of positivity in a, in a negative world today. God has been good to us. We, we have a lot of American pride, but what we need today is we need American gratitude. To just say thank you, God, for all the good things that you've done. Clap your hands unto the Lord right there. Amen. That's a good place to say amen. Amen. We're praying for all those that are sick. And if you have any needs in that regard, we'd love to pray with you. You can contact us. I'm going to take you today to the word of the Lord, Luke chapter number 17. And just want to share just a couple moments, if I can, here. If you'll just stay with us. Uh, pray it won't be too long this morning. But I want to take you to Luke chapter number 17. And we're going to read verses 11 through 19. And this is the story of the miracle of the cleansing of the 10 lepers. And this is unique to Luke's gospel. And so we don't find this anywhere else. We find where the Lord heals leprosy otherwhere, other places and other passages. But this story is unique to this right here. Luke chapter number 17, verses 11 through 19, it says, And it came to pass... As he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, 
turned back. And with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. For he was a Samar- and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus said, Where were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger or this foreigner. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. I want to talk to us for a few moments this morning on this thought. Prayer without thanks. Prayer without thanks. It's a season of thanksgiving and we, we need to be thankful today. It is not only a testimony of really who we are, but it is also a gateway to who we want to be in the Lord. Thanksgiving. Can we pray right now? Lord, I thank you for your word and I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for the presence of the Lord that we've already felt in worship today. And the power of your word, God, can can speak to our life, can break chains and bondage and open up things. And I ask right now that your word would have authority in our life today, in every home and every heart that's listening today, in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. 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 God bless you. You can be seated. Amen. Prayer without thanks. It is a story that we've heard. Perhaps much of our childhood, if we were raised in church, Sunday school, where are the nine? Where are the nine? God was in Christ. And as he's coming down to heaven, uh, from heaven to earth, he's ministering. And Jesus is revealing himself. And he's, he's come to do a purpose, but he's God manifest in the flesh. And he would reveal himself through the miracles that he could do. The fact that he could calm the winds and the waves. The fact that he could heal a leper. The fact that he could touch lepers, and he was not infected. He's the only one, the only entity that could ever come in contact with something unclean and not be unclean himself, but actually change the unclean to clean. But here in this story, it's unique because he never comes in contact with these individuals until later on where the one servant or the one Uh, uh, that was cleansed comes back and falls at his feet and there's a closeness there. He's in proximity. He now can reach out and he can touch Jesus and he falls at his feet, glorifying God, praising God and giving thanks. And, And Jesus is amazed. Where are the nine? There is this one that's come back, but he's amazed. Where are the nine. There should be others, but they're not here. It was so much that it's almost as if our Lord is taken back. He's shocked. He's amazed. This, this ought not be, and he's so disturbed by it. The one testimony of this, the Bible and the KJV calls him a stranger or a foreigner. This Samaritan, this one that would not have presented himself in the cultural communities and, and, and uh, uh, networks that Christ was working in. He's the one that comes back to give thanks, but those others that should have, they're not found, and the Lord's amazed by it. To put in context in the story, Luke lets us know. He, he tells us that Jesus was traveling to Jerusalem. He's going back to Jerusalem. And of course, he, he, he grew up and lives in the Nazareth area, the, the greater Galilee. He, he does most of his ministry in the, the, the city or the town we call Capernaum. And, and on that area, in that northern region of the Sea of Galilee, and the greater part of the sea was called Galilee. And to get to Jerusalem, you would have had to travel down through Samaria. But Samaria had in a large way it it had sealed itself off you weren't welcome and so there was a detour and so he had to cross over what they call Transjordan he'd have to cross the Jordan and travel down on the eastern part of Jordan before crossing again near where old Jericho was to make his way west back up to Jerusalem and as he's making this detour he comes 
to the part where it says in the KJV, he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, or rather where the borders meet together. And there's significance here because he's on the outskirts, if you will. It's the outskirts of Galilee. It's the outskirts of Samaria. And there is a town here. And in this town, there are those that have the disease of leprosy, which by the Old Testament Mosaic law, they are required to live their life out in what we would call today a quarantine. It's a communal uh, 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 situation. Those with leprosy could live together. And as he's passing through this area, that is not only uh, uh, a situation where they have a physical disease and ailment, there is a, a literally a clash of cultures. There is tension. People are on edge. It's the edge of Galilee. It's the edge of Samaria. There is a lot of hostility. There are decades and generations that have gone into this. This is a place that is not warm and welcoming. This isn't the place that you say, when I grew up, I want to live here. In fact, it's in such a place that we find the community of lepers that have been quarantined. And in this community, we know that one of them is a Samaritan, as we find out in the rest of the story. But we also can assume as much that many of them would have been Jews that had to leave their family, had to go out. They've, they've been pushed back and pushed aside. They are victims of circumstance. And now as Jesus comes, it says, as he entered into the village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. It's denoting the fact that they recognized there was a requirement. Today we put the nice wording of socially distant upon it. They were socially distant. They didn't come running up to him. It was not permitted. It was taboo. This was the custom of their life. This was their new normal. And as they're living, they cannot access him. They cannot touch him. They are living in a place, just let me get back. Let me find relief. I want to go home. I want to go where I'm welcomed. I don't want to live in all this frustration. And so much parallels the things that we've seen in communities right here in our own nation and our own circumstances. Perhaps you could identify with where they're at. And this time they lifted up their voice. There was a, a, a requirement if they wanted to be heard. They had to speak out. They lift up their voice and they say, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. It's all they could come up with when they come to the Lord. Surely he saw their situation. Surely he knew the context of their circumstance. And all they could say is, have mercy on us. It was a prayer from a desperate soul. It was a prayer of desperation. It was a prayer that was looking for answers. Have mercy upon us. So many people in this season are making their way back to God. I'm thankful for that. I rejoice over that. I praise God for those that have received the gift of the Spirit watching church online. I praise God for those that have found their way to truth. Amen. By watching services online and connecting. And I'm here to tell you that this testimony is, is evident right here in this passage. That even when you can't connect with God, even when you can't connect with the church. Even when you stand afar off, whether you're socially distanced on your own or circumstances have pushed you to that place, they lifted up their voice. Have mercy on us. Hallelujah. I'm here to encourage somebody. It's not over. Life isn't through. It's never done. Somebody needs to lift up their voice to the Lord today. Can you clap your hands unto the Lord right where you're sitting in your house? Somebody say, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
And when he saw them, and when he saw them, he saw them. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, God sees right where you're at. God knows right where you're at. God knows everything that's going on in your life. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourself, go show yourself unto the priest. There's a lot that goes into that in the Old Testament law. When someone had leprosy, by the way, leprosy of the Old Testament is, is most certainly not what we would call leprosy today. The disease of leprosy today uh, attacks the uh, nervous system so that people can't feel. And one of the, the horrible things is that, uh, you know, we, we adjust to different senses as we feel things. But somebody that has this disease, modern disease, they don't. And so they literally can wear their feet out by standing on them too long because they don't feel when their bodies ache. They don't feel when they burn something. And it's a horrific disease. But the disease of the Old Testament was one that seemed to affect the flesh and parts of the body. There, were, there would be open sores and, and parts of the body would literally die and, and begin to fall off. And so they, they could lose uh, uh, appendages and they could lose uh, uh, that you would see on your ears and nose. It would manifest itself. It was a hideous thing to see. And this disease was extremely contagious, so much so that if somebody had that or it had been in a tent, you were to take everything in the tent and you were to burn it. And the only things that were able to survive were those that could pass through the, the fire and through water that were able to be cleansed and sanitized. So there's a lot of parallels that we're living in. And another thing in the Old Testament required them to... Uh, Somebody that had leprosy not only had to do that, they had to quarantine themselves. They had to, they had to leave their families and their homes. And if it would pass, they, they could then go back to the priest and they could show themselves clean. They had to, uh, in fact, uh, babe, can you throw me my mask up over there right there real quick? They were the first ones, the first mention of anybody ever having to wear a mask. It's actually in Leviticus. They had to take and they had to shave their, all of the hair off of their head and their beard and they would take a, a piece of material and they would let it hang over their face. It was required by law. And so they're living in quarantine. They had to mask up. And then when they went about, they had to announce themselves unclean, unclean. They, they had to, required by law to do that, to take responsibility for what happened to them so that they did not infect anybody else. And so when, when they were unclean, they had, they had, it was a very public thing. It was horrible. It was an awful thing. But once they were cleansed, once the leprosy had left them after so many days and they had taken care of everything, once they were back at a state, then for them to enter back in, they had to go back to the priesthood. And it was those priests who would look by the law and would declare them, examine them according to the law, and then would declare them clean again. If they were unclean, if they knew that, there was no point in going back to the priest because the priest were not going to declare them clean based on their desire for them or their relationship. They were bound by the law. And so when Jesus tells them, go show yourself under the priest, it can only mean one thing. It could only mean that there was a miracle that was about to take place. That there was a miracle that was going to happen. But the Bible distinctly tells us, and it came to pass that as they went... As they went, there was not an immediate healing. When he said, go show yourself to the priest, if they would have stopped and paused and looked, there was no change. The leprosy would have still been on their body. But the Bible declares, as they went, they were cleansed. The miracle took place, note this, only when they gave authority to his voice and they obeyed. I'm going to tell you today I've got a confidence greater than anything else. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen in my future. I don't know what's going to happen in my own circumstances. But what I do know is that there is a power. When I give authority to his voice, 
when I give authority to His voice and I obey His Word. Amen. Let me encourage somebody. Maybe not everything's looking up yet. Maybe nothing else has changed. You prayed and you say, I don't see any change. Let me encourage somebody. Give the Lord's voice authority in your life. Could it be? Amen. You say, well, hey, it hasn't changed yet, but I'm trusting in God. And as they went, they were cleansed. Even Christ in his earthly miracle, in his earthly uh, uh, miracles that he did, the miracles would take place differently. Sometimes, Brother Zarita, they were instant. Sometimes they were in a moment. Sometimes they were not in a moment. They were gradual. Sometimes it was God waiting on us. Sometimes they had contingencies. Go wash. And then all of a sudden their eyes were made cleansed. Can I tell you the most powerful thing you can do in your life is give the Lord authority and to obey. Obey his word. They obeyed his word, and as they went, here he goes. The Bible says that they were cleansed. There was a miracle that took place. The magnitude of this miracle was such there was no medicine for the disease of leprosy. There was no vaccine. There was nothing that could stop it. There was nothing that could turn it. There was no hope except the hope of God. And Jesus did the miracle without ever even touching them. I'm going to tell you that's the power of our God. Hallelujah. You say, well, Pastor, I don't know what I can do. I can't make it back to church. I'm going to tell you, yes, we want to be in church. We are communal in our worship. But I'm thankful that I've got a power. Amen. God is more powerful. Amen. Than our geographical limitations. And in a moment, he healed them. And then we come to verse 15. And one of them, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Now this is, this is where we're at. It's a season of thanksgiving. And many in this season are going to be, they're going to be trapped by the new normal that they've been forced into. You're going to be frustrated. And it's going to be easy to get caught up living in the hostilities and the tensions and, and the quarantines and the, and, and, and the requirements and the laws and the restrictions to be critical, to be spiteful, to be frustrated. But Jesus did a miracle in the middle of that situation. And the others, it seems, were so, so uh, motivated to get back to normal that they dispensed with even giving God thanks, with even acknowledging what he had done. But there was one, one turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. He turned back with a loud voice. He praised God. With a loud voice, he worshiped God. And then it says in verse 16... And fell down on his face at his feet, giving thanks. Hallelujah. Here's a man that moments before, just a verse before, is socially distanced. Here's a man that is limited. Here's a man that's without of reach of Jesus Christ. But when God does the miracle, all of the sudden there was something more that took place. What God had done in his life was worth a pause. I don't want God to do something for me and then just me go on with my life. I don't want God to work a miracle for me and then me just to go on with my life. Can I tell you how many others are out there are there that God is working for them on their behalf every day but we take it for granted and we just go on living our life but there's something that happens when we allow thanksgiving to enter into our heart. Thanksgiving's going to cause you to stop. Thanksgiving's going to cause you to pause. Thanksgiving's going to take what was out of reach and put it in proximity and he fell down on his face at his feet giving thanks giving him thanks what do we need we need the touch of God we need the closeness of God amen if you're ever wondering God where are you at God I don't know where you're at have you ever been through a season where you're praying and you say God I don't know where you're at right now 
You're in good company, David said in Psalm 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Amen. But he learned later on, God never forsook me. And he said, I've been young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. David matured to a place where he understood that if you'll just praise God, if you'll just thank God, amen, sooner or later you won't feel the touch of his hand. You're going to feel him keeping you and holding you. Thanksgiving brought him to proximity before the Lord. If you're going through a dry season in your life, I'll never forget this. Going through a dry season in my young age, and I was a teenager, I'd been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but I had gone a season without, as we would say, praying through in the Spirit. Just a cold season. I go to church and I worship God, but I could feel the touch of the Lord, but He wasn't moving in me. He wasn't stirring inside of me. I can't even remember the evangelist's name, but I could take you back to the date. I could take you back to the space. It was 1993. It was the end of the year. It was probably somewhere around November or December. And an evangelist came through our church in Indianapolis and he preached a message. I can't remember his name. I don't know how great his ministry was. He probably thought he was a failure because when he gave the altar a call, I don't think there were very many people that came through the altar, but he preached about giving thanks, Brother John. And when he gave that altar, I'll never forget as a teenager going to that altar and I laid on the altar and I began to pray, God, I thank you, God, I'm so sorry. You've been so good to me. And Brother Brandon, it wasn't very long. I'd been praying probably 20 minutes there or so and I'd been praying and I I was a few minutes into my prayer before I even realized without even knowing it that I was speaking in tongues and God had been moving on my heart. I was lost in giving God thanks. I was lost and giving God praise. All I was doing was pausing to acknowledge what he had done. And all of a sudden, the next thing I know, I'm at the feet of Jesus. I'm right there within proximity of the Lord. I'm here to tell somebody today, come on, we don't want to be people that pray, but don't give thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at this. Look at this. Not all would have been Samaritan. If they were all Samaritans, the Bible would not have marked it. But it said he came back and he was a Samaritan. What's, what's, what's Luke saying? He's saying the one that was the least likely, the one that would have understood Jesus as the Messiah the least was the Samaritan. Where are those other Jews? Where are the other ones that knew the law? Where are the other ones that would have understood the full implication of what Christ was saying? When he said, go show yourself, but it took a stranger. It took someone that was foreign. It took someone that didn't know about all the things, but they just had a desire to give thanks. And he came back. And the Lord says, where are the nine? He was so amazed. Why? Because there were ten that were cleansed. But only one had faith. There were ten that were cleansed, but only one came back to give thanks. There were ten that were cleansed, but only one was made whole. There were ten that were healed, but only one was made whole. And Jesus was offended that they would pray, but that they would not give thanks. Can I tell you, the Lord wants whosoever will to cry out to him. All ten of them lifted up their voice. Have mercy on me. God was not moved by that. He was not, uh, he was not offended by that. He welcomed that. He was ready to heal them. He was ready to save, provide, deliver, do whatever. But he was offended that there was only one that stopped to give thanks. Can I tell you, I don't want to be guilty of prayer without thanks. Come on, we hear a lot of people say prayer. One of the biggest things is the praying hands. That's a big emoji that we use all the time. I'm praying. I pray. We, we know how to pray, and we need to pray. I, you hear me admonish you to prayer a lot of times. Amen. But what I'm afraid of is we don't pray very much. But if we do pray, we pray, but we're not stopping to give God thanks. We, we need to pray more. Yes, we ought to pray. But what we can't have is we can't have prayer without thanksgiving. Yeah. 
I don't want to run to God every time my bank account's low. I don't want to run to God every time I'm sick. Amen. But when he heals me, I don't pause to acknowledge it. Amen. But if he's ever healed you, if he's ever set you free, if he's ever delivered you, if he's ever made a way, amen. Come on, somebody. Then there's got to be a heart of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Inside of your heart. Hallelujah. That brings you to the feet of Jesus. And the Lord looks at it. He said, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Come on, we've all done it. And we ought to continue to do it. We pray for people that are not of faith. Or pray for people that aren't in church. And God will do miracles. We've prayed for people right here in CTK. There's been prayer requests that have come in for family, lost loved ones, other ones, and sickness and disease. And we've seen miracles. We pray. And thank God for those prayers. We ought to continue to pray. But the purpose, the reason why God answers those prayers is not so that we can just pick up and go on with life. But so that He can do something inside of our heart. I was wrestling with a title for this. I don't know. I, I title it Prayer Without Thanks. But Sister Monica was helping me and she said, well, maybe you, you ought to title it Healed But Not, not Whole. Healed But Not Whole. Healed Not Made Whole. How many of us have been healed by God? But what he's looking to do is more than heal your body. What he's looking to do is more than just get you on the right track financially. What he's looking to do is get you is, is more than just take you out of an uncomfortable space and return you to a comfortable space. What Jesus is looking to do is to make you whole. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you it's a, it's a paradox because the one that was made whole was the one that had thanksgiving in his heart. I don't ever want to forget where God brought me from. Yeah. I don't ever want to forget how God saved me. I don't ever want to forget what God's done in my life. I'm coming to a close as they come to the music. Here it is. He prayed. Ten prayed, but only one returned to give thanks. Paul says this in Philippians chapter number four. He says, be careful for nothing or would mean this, don't be anxious but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Philippians 4 and 6, let your request be made known unto God. So Paul admonishes us there in Philippians 4 and 6 that we are to pray and to bring our needs before the Lord, to offer supplication as it says. God's desiring of us. Who else can help us when we're socially distant? Who else can help us when we're victims of our own circumstance and situations? Who else can help us but the Lord? And I thank God that He is faithful. He will be faithful. This is how much God will love us. He will be faithful every time. He was offended that they didn't come back to give thanks, but had He met them another place and they were in the same condition and they cried out again, no doubt He would have stopped. And he would have done the thing for them again. He would have blessed them. He would have healed them. He would have done whatever. So I ask you to examine yourself. I ask you, how many times has God answered your prayer? And you say, well, yeah, I gave him thanks. Or I said, thank you, Lord. But thanksgiving is more than just, just lip service. It is a part of that. And we have to do that. It is a public thing that we do. We, we, we praise God. We give thanks Literally with our mouth, we'll say, Lord, I thank you, Lord. Uh, and we'll be specific about that. But Thanksgiving is so much more. Thanksgiving will, will do something. It will change. There will be a change in our heart. It takes us from socially distant to at his feet. Yes. Without even realizing it, he was just saying, i got to give God thanks. And the next thing he know, the, the text does not say that Jesus came to him. But it says that he turned and returned and, and gave glory to God and fell on his face giving thanks and he was at his feet. So there's got to be a change in your heart that says, okay, God, I'm going to show up. I'm going to... I'm going to show up when the church house is open. I, I'm going to show up in the morning. It's not just going to be another day that I'm going, to, I'm going to take time to pause, God, and say, Lord, I thank you. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I'm going to take time to, to get into the Word. Amen. If you're really thankful for how God changed you, you're not going to take it for granted. But I'm going to live in such a way. So let your prayer 
and your supplication with thanksgiving. Be with thanksgiving in Colossians 4 and 2. He says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. There, there, is, a, there is a relationship between prayer and thanksgiving that is natural that God wants. And the beautiful thing is when thanksgiving comes in your heart. That's when God says, I can make you whole again. I can change you. I don't want to be touched and not changed. I don't want to be cleansed from my disease, but not changed in my heart. I, I don't want to be healed and not made whole. But there's a wholeness that comes from giving God thanks. So maybe you've got wounds that won't heal. Maybe you've got things in your life that you're fighting and you're dealing with. You're, maybe you're in a season where you can't touch God, you can't feel God. I'm going to tell you, cry out to Him. Let there be prayer in your heart, but then do it with thanksgiving. God, I'm, I'm not where I want to be, but God, I thank you. God, I'm not healed yet, but I thank you. God, I'm not totally delivered yet, but I thank you. Come on, can you do that right where you're sitting, right where you're at in your own home, your car, wherever you, you, you find yourself watching this today? Can you bow your heads with me right now? I invite you to pray. Come on, we're going to worship again. God, I thank you today. Lord, your touch is so real. God, you are so powerful. And God, when we can't touch you, Lord, you hear us. A simple prayer of have mercy upon me, God, is enough for you to step into our situation, God. And as we give obedience to your voice, God, you can heal the very specific need. You can deliver. You can provide the very specific need that we bring to you. And we God, I pray, Lord, that when, that when that healing comes, when that touch comes, don't just let us pick up with life and go on, but let there be a thanksgiving in our heart. Let there be a praise that comes out, a praise that's more than lip service. But God, let that praise order our steps back to you, God. Let that thanksgiving, God, draw us back into your presence again. In the name of the Lord. Come on, can we take a moment right now? I want you just to right now, we've laid our needs on the altar. God knows what we need of. But I want you just over the next five minutes here, I want you just to begin to thank God for everything that he's done. God, I thank you for the life you've given me. I thank you for the blessing, God. God, I may not be where I want to be or need to be, but God, I thank you that I'm still here. There's still life. Come on. I encourage you right now in your own words. We're going to begin to sing. And as we do, I want you, amen, just to give thanks to God. Come on. Let your house become a household of praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I thank you today. Lord, I love to worship your name.
God, you are. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, I love that song. I will lift up my hands. I will give you praise. There's something about the Lord that just makes you want to love him. Amen. I, I can't help. I love, I love the house of God. I love worship and all the wonderful things God's done for us. Thank you to everybody that's been here to help us. And we wish, amen, that we could see you in person this week, but we can't. So on behalf of my wife and I, amen, come here, babe. And all of us here, we want to say happy Thanksgiving this week. We want you to have a great and blessed Thanksgiving. I know there's hard times around us, and some of you are going through some very difficult times, amen. But God is always worthy. Amen. There's always something to be thankful for. And I pray that God would maybe bring healing a little bit more to you in this season as you find a little bit more thankfulness. So join us on the seven days of Thanksgiving. Be sure to check your emails. And we'll be coming with a message every single day there this week. We look forward to seeing you back, Lord willing, next week right here in person. Unless things are out of our control, but we'll keep you posted. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving.
Jesus, you're the one that I adore. Yet I want to tell you something so much more. Where are words to describe your greatness? Wonders of mercy beyond compare. No one else could love me like you do Your passion on the cross has broken through You are the hero that brought my freedom Savior, Redeemer, my Lord and King Somebody proclaim it. 